Welcome to this edition of Investment Insights. Today we have James Wilson with us. Welcome James. Thanks Natasha. With the New Zealand economy entering a recession of the slimmest of margins in June, what is your outlook for local markets? The New Zealand economy contracted 0.1% in the first quarter of this year, following a fall of 0.7% in the December quarter. So this meets the definition of a technical recession, which is two consecutive quarters of negative economic growth. The decline in the first quarter was driven by weakness in professional business services, following a series of devastating weather events earlier in the year, including the flooding in Auckland and Cyclone Gabrielle. And while we note that the decline of 0.1% is minimal, it is clear that the New Zealand economy is losing momentum and facing a number of headwinds, including slowing global growth. So there is reason to remain cautious on the local equity market, as we expect softer demand to persist going forward, with consumers continuing to feel the pinch of rising mortgage rates, falling house prices and cost of living pressures. However, the silver lining for the local New Zealand equity market is that it is not a great representation of the New Zealand economy. So weak GDP doesn't automatically translate to weakness in the New Zealand equity market, which is more exposure to traditional defensive sectors, such as healthcare, utilities and property. So in light of further weakness in GDP numbers, we would expect the local equity market to remain quite resilient to these pressures. And depending on the severity of a global slowdown, the local market may even be attractive for global investors. In May 2023, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand raised the official cash rate by 25 basis points, taking it to 5.5%. What does this increase mean for Kiwi investors? That's right, the increase in the official cash rate by 25 basis points in May was widely expected by the markets, bringing the cash rate now to its highest level in 14 years. This has different implications for households. For those of us with savings in the bank, it's great news. But for those of us with a mortgage, perhaps not so great news. But from an investment perspective, after all the financial pain we've suffered in getting to this point, cash and bonds are now starting to offer attractive returns to Kiwi investors. Whereas investors in the equity or property market tend not to react so favourably, as higher interest rates generally means higher costs and can result in lower expected valuations. So a key thing we are monitoring is whether interest rates have peaked or not and we see it as vitally important to focus on investing actively in companies which can best withstand these cost pressures. Looking forward, what are some trends we are likely to see in the markets in quarter three? Well, 2023 has certainly been an interesting year for global markets, with equities reversing their large declines in 2022 and technology stocks surging on the back of the euphoria around artificial intelligence. And this is most certainly going to continue to be a theme for the rest of 2023. Now we are already seeing monetary policy divergence across the largest economies, some regions approaching the point of pausing their interest rate rising regime, others are still getting there, and some in the case of China may start to do the opposite. And this global divergence reflects the breadth of challenges faced by each region. And while we believe the worst is now behind us, over the short term it is entirely feasible that interest rates continue to rise and remain high even after pausing because inflation is coming down, however core inflation, which strips out the more volatile impacts of energy and food prices, remains high. A key factor in that is having a tight labour market, which is historically tight across the globe, especially in the services sector where fairly widespread shortages are seen. Now this puts upward pressure on wages and in turn creates inflation. Now the one thing to watch with all of this is the lagged effect of monetary policy. The effect of an interest rate rise on, on an economy doesn't happen right away and it can take up to 18 months. So the question markets will be looking to answer this year and will certainly be, have central banks got it right? Have they gone too far or not far enough? The answer of which can result in market leadership changes, for example, a defensive rotation or a cyclical rebound. Thank you for watching this edition of Investment Insights.